weekend's over, so no more lounging around. Time to get started. Good morning. My name is Dr. Alex Ernst, and I am one of the veterinarians here at the Cape May County Zoo, and I am here with none other than Jilly. And I am here to tell you today about cows. Now you may say to yourself, cows, now they aren't that exciting. But I am here to tell you that you're wrong. Cows are very exciting, and I'm gonna tell you why. Now, let's first talk a little bit about Jilly and her specific breed. Jilly is a Holstein cow. Holstein cows are dairy cows, and they were originally produced in Holland. This breed of cow is the most popular dairy breed in the entire world. And the reason why is that this breed is the highest producing dairy cow in the world. Your average Holstein, when they're producing milk, can average between nine and 14 gallons of milk per day. So if you factor that out over the course of a year, that's 2,700 to 4,100 gallons of milk per year. That's a lot of milk but that's why they're so popular as dairy cows. Now, what are some of the states that have the most dairy cows in the country? You think New Jersey ranks very high with dairy cows? We don't. The three highest producing states for dairy in the country are California, Wisconsin, and New York. But fortunately for us here in New Jersey, one of the states bordering us to the west, Pennsylvania, is very high on that list. In fact, most of the fluid milk we drink here in Southern New Jersey comes from our friends in Pennsylvania. Now, you might be saying to yourself, what do we do with all that milk? Do we drink all of that milk in the United States? No, we make a lot of different products with milk here. So can you think of some of the products that we make with milk in this country? So if you're saying things like butter, cream, ice cream, yogurt. These are all the things that we do with the milk we produce in this country. So we don't just drink it all, we make all those yummy things too. Now let's talk a little bit about the science here. Jilly is a cow and they are herbivores. Herbivores are animals that are classified as animals that eat plant matter. Now, here's what's really interesting. If you are ever here at the zoo and you're feeding Jilly, if you look, she only has incisors on the bottom. She doesn't have incisors on the top. So in the front of her mouth, she only has those bottom incisors. But in the back of her mouth, she has rows and rows of flat molars. And that's what helps break down the plant matter when she's eating. The other thing that's most notable about Jilly, and it makes her famous, is this tongue that you see. And we see that tongue. See how it curls around when she eats? That tongue helps her when she's trying to feed. Cattle are a type of herbivore called a grazer. So when you're driving by cattle in a field, hey, Jill, come back. When you're driving by cattle in a field, you probably notice that they all have their heads down and they're grazing they graze on grass. So that tongue, when that sticks out and curls around the grass, it pulls it out so that they can eat it. Now, the other thing that makes these guys unique is the type of digestion. So, what's interesting about mammals is mammals do not possess the correct um, enzymes in their digestive tract to fully extract the nutrients from plant matter. So for animals like herbivores who only eat plant matter, they have to have some help in order to get all the nutrients out of their um, diet. So Jilly is the type of herbivore called a ruminant. A ruminant is an animal who has a large four-chambered stomach called a rumen. So it's within that rumen that they're able to digest the food that they eat. So what's really interesting each part of the rumen has a name, and each part does something very, very different, all right? The four parts of the rumen are called the reticulum. It is the um, first small part. Um, it's the, immediately after the esophagus. Then the next and the biggest part of the rumen is called the rumen. 
Um, the third chamber of the rumen is called the omasum, and the fourth chamber of the rumen is called the abomasum. The abomasum is a gastric stomach, just like you and I have, but the three chambers that come before the abomasum, they have very specialized functions that help the ruminant break down plant matter. And the way they do this is they have a large population of microbes, protozoa, bacteria, that, that work with the animal to help digest and break down that plant matter. It's a process called fermentation. So in their stomach, they're able to ferment all that plant matter and utilize almost 100% of the nutrients that come out of it. Another thing that's real interesting about ruminants, they are evolutionarily adapted to being um, prey species. If you think of herbivores across the animal spectrum, the vast majority of them are considered prey species. But evolutionarily speaking, they um, adapted by this rumen. And so the way this works is they're able to, when they are grazing, because we already talked about them being grazers, well, when they're grazing, they're out in the open and they're exposed to potential predators. So the way they've adapted to compensate for that, um, for that vulnerability is that they eat as quickly as they can, get as much as they can into their rumen. And then they do something called regurgitation and um, rumination. Have you ever heard of a cow called chewing their cud? Well, that's what happens. They eat so very quickly to get everything that they can into their stomach so they can go back to safety. And when they go back to safety, they'll lay down and ruminate. And so they will regurgitate some of that plant matter up and chew it again and grind it down into smaller particles so that the bacteria and the protozoa in their stomach can help break that down. Pretty interesting. Now let's talk a little bit about Jilly's diet here. Now obviously here at the zoo, Jilly isn't out on a big field where she's grazing on grass. Um, so here we provide her with a high quality grass hay. And so she eats that. In fact, if you come first thing in the morning, she's usually very distracted because that's when the keepers give her her hay. And so she likes that. But after a while, she'll come up to the front and eat the treats that you guys um, are able to purchase for her. Uh, Jilly is seven years old. She just had a birthday last month. Um, she came to us locally, um, a dairy farm up in Salem County, Allen Williams Dairy Farm. Um, and uh, she came to us from our friends up at uh, that farm. Now, um, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Jilly. We have a challenge for you today. The Jilly challenge is stick your tongues out as far as you possibly can. And if you can touch your tongue to your nose, put it in the comment section. Thank you.